a sermon by Charles Spurgeon entitled The Two Yokes, Jeremiah 28, 13. I can only suggest that you read the entire book of Jeremiah to get a grip on the man. A word of caution, however, that I gave once before when I heard a contemporary preacher's son cutting his teeth on the book of Isaiah. And at the end of his sermon, he said that you should get out of the book of Isaiah because in the book of Isaiah, you would only hear and see the words of Isaiah. That is not true, as I said in the previous video. If you only see Isaiah in the book of Isaiah, then you should not be preaching at all. And it's much the same with Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is a figure who makes us to feel for him and be compassionate for the calling that he had. And part of that is spoken about in this video where Charles Spurgeon speaks of Jeremiah being one who speaks the word in words, uh, in symbols and in acting out. And he was mocked at for sure. He was mocked. And Jeremiah is a figure with whom we all, we should all as Christians, have compassion upon for his calling. Anyway, I, I digress. The two yokes, Jeremiah 28, 13. And to quote a little bit here of Charles Spurgeon. No yoke is so hard to bear as the yoke you put upon yourselves when you reject all rule and order, break through all law and will not submit to any principle or government, however right or just. The slavery of serving oneself. He that makes his belly his guard and bows down to the private lusts of himself serves a tyrant indeed. For in his boastful exemption of all regard to his fellow creatures, he sets himself up in his own esteem, and that, after a diabolical method, alone and apart, in his awful selfishness, like an iceberg, to melt away, and maybe to crush others as he moves across his course. What is he but a beacon against which we are all to be warned. So the yoke fits the human neck and the human neck is made to wear it. Whether God or mammon, that is the spirit or the flesh, the Lord or the world, we all serve an unseen power which drives us just as surely as the wind drives the sails of the ship. Without a captain at the helm, it would simply go wherever the wind pushed it, and almost certainly that would be to ruin. There are such souls who live this way. They never think, reflect, or make noteworthy decisions, but travel as the wind blows, and curse the wind itself, when the ensuing chaos becomes intolerable, but more usually, they find a person or thing to attach the blame to, lest their own destructive folly be, vi be visible to their betters. Such people are the brute and mute beasts of the earth, whose God is their belly, and only a ruinous trail lingers after their unlamented deaths. They live and they die, and the yoke about their necks has been self. But for the rest, the yoke changes with the years, from the loving and gentle yoke of parental care to that of the marriage yoke. We are yoked to our children, unto death do we part. And we must serve our modern masters or live in penury or we are servants of the state, fed and housed and clothed at its expense, 
and raising generations at the same treadmill, like little donkeys going around in circles so that just sufficient flour is dispensed to do it all again on the morrow. Or maybe wealth management rather than destitution control is your yoke, ever scheming and labouring to increase your profits lest the spreadsheet leaks a tiny loss. For like to one unsteady domino, it might bring the collapse of your whole house. But from gra cradle to grave we serve. We are in bondage and servitude, whether we wish it or no. And if Christ be not the captain of our ship, then we are and shall continue to be ruined. And we either ruin or fail to save others we meet on our journey, a.k.a. the sins of omission are no less destructive than those willfully committed. We destroy others when we destroy ourselves. But to be burdened by and yoked unto the Lord of glory, Jesus Christ our Saviour, is to be yoked to love everlasting. Every other yoke and burden falls away, every other voice Every treacherous will and way of our own, every storm and tumult and the terrible sounds of rampaging horses, every disquiet within and clamour without, all and every noise and din, clamouring to have mastery over us, is all swallowed up in our Lord Christ Jesus. No ill can attach to him, no confusion, tempest or storm can undo him, and he breaks every burden and yoke that ever was fashioned by human hands. If we only knew of this master, we would eagerly abandon our own yoke and take on his, even if for only and every selfish reason known to man, we would rush to exchange our yoke. But, thank God, we do not take. It is he who gives. And once yoked to the beloved, we are set free indeed. May you be gifted with an ear with which to hear and an eye with which to see and a heart with which to love. For if Christ is not your burden, then the world is and it will crush every good thing to its death. The world is, and its remit is to maim, kill, injure, and destroy the little child within. The innocence, truth, and beauty that is welcomed in heavenly dwellings. We cannot live as children in this fallen world, we would be devoured if we tried. But in Christ we enjoy this freedom because he is ever our father, our mother, our husband and brother. No one deals with him. No one deals with us except through him. Just as we are already dead, until alive in Christ, our flesh bearing witness to this corruption and decay, so too are we all under the yoke of tyranny. With the evil one at the helm, his chosen ones enjoy the world's luxuries, whilst his minions are below deck, chained to their oars and thrown to the fishes when no longer of use. Choose Christ whilst his voice still beckons. Choose Christ whilst his arms remain open wide in this age of grace. Choose Christ before the age of grace comes to a sudden, unexpected and awful end.
Amen.